What is up, everybody? It's your friendly neighborhood Valsider here, and I'm bringing you episode number three of Becoming a Pro. Sorry, this episode has come so sort of late. I sort of had Christmas and family, and then a whole bunch of lands, and I got kind of lazy, and you know, it just, yeah. So hopefully we'll be a little bit more active before I go back to uni, and we'll get some more videos pumping out. Today's episode is about communication, so it's hard enough focusing on your own game and tearing your eyes away off what's in front of you just to check your minimap, just to be aware of who's around you and what they're doing and which way they're facing and where they're moving and whatnot. So the idea of comming in-game is, is to let your team know what's happening beyond, beyond their peripheral, beyond what they're watching and beyond what they're doing. So you can get like a, a, general, a general feel in your head for where the enemy is and how they're going to set up and what they're going to do. So usually when we're playing, I have my team communicate uh, where enemies are going and what they're doing. So a smart player will then be able to read how they're going to set up or to anticipate what move they're going to make next so that it may be countered by your team or when you respawn next so you can then go do something about it. Like often enough I'll get a call out and I'll just throw a nade into the sky just based purely on communication and I'll get a kill off it and I see that a lot in S&D as well, it's a big one. So. I also try and call key things that they're doing. For example, if I'm if I'm doubled up pretty close to a teammate and we're doing a push, maybe in search and destroy, and I go down and then the enemy doesn't know my teammate was there and I hear him pull a grenade or I see him pull a grenade just um, before the kill cam or in the spectating after afterwards. So I can then that's a perfect opportunity for me to tell my teammate, hey, he's pulling a grenade, rush him, you can't do anything. Another thing I have my team com is how many people are dead. This is a really good one to do while you're respawning, so just hit that hit that back button and make yourself useful, and don't waste 7.5 seconds of your life just sitting there doing nothing. These are the things that everyone should be doing, but they're a little bit more class specific. So for objective players, I typically have when and where they're pulling flags. So this is sort of a key one. So you've you've got to feel that you, you play a little bit different as a slayer when you know that someone's pulling a flag. You don't want to contest as hard. You want to stay alive so you can get the cut, so you can move into a position to slow the enemy team because the enemy team's mentality is going to change from just average let's take map control back to shit we've got to stop that flag. Often objective players run past other players and, and leave them behind like you don't need to kill every single person you see as an objective player so it's heaps important for them if they're going to run past someone is to call out and say hey I'm leaving this dude behind Kyle kill him. Moving on to more Slayer specific callouts. Now Slayers really don't have to worry so much about checking every corner and worrying about how they're going to get a flag out and particular things like that. So the Slayers have, have more time to sort of think and just mellow out on their own. So typically the Slayers should be calling where the enemy is spawning. So I mean often your objective players will get that opportunity but it won't be so much. Usually the Slayers are the ones that read the spawns and know the spawns. Like for example Vamped. Vamped is our, our spawn call most of the time and he's pretty damn good at predicting them based on who gets kills where and who dies where. I mean, while the game's still young, everyone's sort of learning the spawns, but for now it's, it's primarily a slayer focused thing, so I'd say probably about like six or seven months down the track, the objective players would be calling it. Half the time we probably won't even need to call it. Actually, it is Modern Warfare 3 and the spawns are disgusting, so we probably will need to call them regardless at all times, but as time passes you really get a feel, it's sort of like a, like a sixth sense. Alright, this next one dips a little bit back on um, the last episode we did about mentality. Now when things start to get a little bit quiet and you start getting like smacked a little bit, it's kind of harder to call out what's happening and you sort of lose that excited tone and things get a little bit quieter and there's just, it doesn't feel like there's as much to call out and you know, I'm like, call out guys, call out, call out. And they're like, what is there to call out? There's nothing to call out with being spawn raped. So what I have people do then is, if we're not the brightest and we are that little bit quiet, I try to get, give my team, get my team, sorry, to give me a running commentary of what they're doing. So I want to know where they are, what's happening, because traditionally, if you're being spawn raped and stuff like that, you really have like you're focusing on what you're doing. You have little awareness, like even less awareness than usual of what your team is doing. So you spend less time looking at your mini map, trying to trying to know where your team is, and more time focused on your own gameplay. So typically when there's running commentaries in action, everyone knows they've got to step their game up a little bit and this really allows that to happen because you spend, like I said, you spend less time worrying about everything else and more time worrying about you. And once you have yourself back on track, you can help get the rest of the team back on track. Alright, this next part is specifically on the act of communicating. So this, this is one thing that I absolutely have to stress. This is one of the biggest things. Okay, I stress, I stress, I stress this 100% calm before you swear. Something bad happens, 
I don't want to hear shit. I don't want to hear you swearing your head off. I want to know where that person is so I can kill them and get vengeance for you. A lot of times you'll die and you'll have a teammate supporting you and they need to know where that person is instantly, straight away. Because I've been let down many a time just by him being, ah, son of a bitch, he's up there. I'm like, where the shit is up there? What what, what son of a bitch? I don't see him. And then I get shot in the side. I get nated from space. I mean, sure, there, there, there are some scenarios where some things just absolutely suck. Like, maybe like a last second flag or you miss out on a cap by some ridiculous dude in a ridiculous corner at the last second. Then fine. Give me an, oh, shit, I want, I want to hear that, I want to hear that rage, just just get it out of your system, and just pick yourself up for the next time, but keep it happy, keep it positive, like, like if you make it all depressed sounding, and you sound all oh, shit, then everybody sort of is like, oh, shit, we really needed that flag, we just lost that flag, we're fucked, you really don't need that, you, you need that positivity, when you stuff up like that, we usually have the rule to keep it positive, keep it funny, like, make, it, make your violence and your rage hilarious to the rest of us, and it sort of just picks it up, and allows us to pick you back up. Alright, considering we've probably broken the uh, the six minute mark here, so that's more than a half of flag or something, um, I might as well make this a two part video, because most losers see ten minutes and like, I don't want to watch ten minutes of this dipshit talking, so part two will be up momentarily. Also, just quickly while I'm thinking about it, um, I'm using a new mic here. Let me know how it sounds. I've been using my Astros before, but this is like some big dirty mic that's specifically meant for this sort of thing and recording music. Um, I reckon I sound a little bit nasally and a little bit weird with it, but anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think, I'd really appreciate that if you prefer this or the, the older sounding, the older sounding me through the Astro headset. Um, yeah, excuse me, like a few of these things I had to cut this a little bit, because this mic is actually really freaking heavy and I don't have a stand for it, and I've like, I've got it pressed in against like underneath my lip, so forgive me if uh, the audio is like a little bit loud and a little bit quiet, because I sort of, I like to thrash around and I've got to hold this big dirty dildo thing to my lips, so yeah. Fun stuff.